Okay, hi everyone. So if you're watching this video, it should mean that you have gotten to the end of the tutorial that I've recommended and linked in the notes to this video. And if I just hide these other vases, you should have something like this. And I recommended that you go to about nine minutes into the video. Um, so what the previous video did is it set up this geometry nodes network where we have two curves and we can use the profile of these curves. We can alter the profile of these curves and we can also mix these two curves together um, using uh, parameters that we have put programmed in the geometry node system and then linked um, here in the group input properties and even sort of renamed them so that we kind of know what they all are. So we've got things like um, the rotation resolution. We can t make this into a triangle at the smallest resolution and a round shape at a high resolution. Um, we can change the radius, uh, the height, and so on. Now, what I want to do is just make a few small changes so that this tutorial can be customized for our exercise, which is going to be ceramic printing in uh, 3D printing in ceramics. So the first thing I've done is I've actually disabled the extrude mesh join geometry merge by distance function in the tutorial and I've replaced it with a solidify modifier. So I'll show you what that means. If I turn this solidify modifier off and I unmute by pressing the letter M, these will get that um, extrude sort of thickness back here. But for our purposes in 3D printing, I think the solidify modifier might give us a little bit more control. Again, this is a bit of a guess because I haven't done ceramic 3D printing before, but I think it's good to have this option just so we can control our thickness. So I'm just going to turn off by pressing the key M, all of these nodes again, and I'll delete this solidify modifier. And so basically, if this is your vase here, you've got the geometry nodes, which appears as a modifier here. And we're simply going to add another modifier, which will be under the generate solidify section and we can tick even thickness and we can also tick fill, fill the rim, which will just make sure we keep this little rim up here. And I think this might be useful um, to give us a little bit of easier control to control the thickness when we make our vase. Now, what I want to show you is a few other ways we can start to, start to vary this shape in Blender. And as I'm not a super expert in geometry nodes, I've made my variations using a combination of geometry nodes and some existing modifiers here in the modifier stack. And what I'm going to show you here are really just some suggestions to give you an idea of ideas you might, you know, things you might play around with. So if I start with this one here, you can see that it's got the exact same um, geometry node setup. So basically I've taken this one and I've hit Shift D and I'll um, grab this on the Y axis and move it over here. And I've just duplicated, you know, this one here as well. I've changed some of the parameters here. So, you know, the, um, the modifiers here are a little different, particularly I put the resolution down to four because that gives us this kind of cool square profile. And then I've simply added the solidify modifier. So you can see from here to here, there's not a great difference. It's just really sort of changing the resolution and the curve profile to all of a sudden go to what's a completely different style of vase, you know, a hexagon or what I had here was a square. So first of all, let's have a look at this one here with the twist. So just to show you how I've made it, I'll just delete it and I'll click on the uh, first little example here <clears throat> where I just deleted or just um, made the resolution lower and I'll shift D to duplicate, left click to, ap to apply the duplication, then G and X to move it along the x-axis. I'll just collapse the geometry and solidifier modifiers and I'm going to add one more modifier which is a simple deform. Now I'm sure there's a, a nice way to do this in geometry nodes. It's just a little bit out of my expertise which is kind of why I'm bringing geometry nodes into the class so I can learn a bit more with you guys. Okay so let's just change the axis to the z-axis and you'll see as we make this number higher we get this kind of cool twist on the shape. And I'll just leave it at 180 for now. And one thing we don't know just yet is whether this will be appropriate to make with the ceramic 3D printer. 
I had a chat to Ray, who's been running the machine, and we came up with limits kind of like this, where we can see that there's a size um, limitation here of 100 millimeters tall, which is 10 centimeters. The wall thickness, we guessed, will be about three millimeters. But these two are ones that we'll need to sort of experiment with a bit in what we make in Blender and what we'll print. The overhang, which refers to, you know, the angle, if I look from the side, the angle that it can overhang, and then the hole thickness, which I'll have a look at when I start to make some strange and more decorative objects. So this, as I said, it's the first time I've done it in this course, so we'll probably have to get used to the function of the machine together and just, you know, kind of see how it works. All right, so let's have a look at the next one and see what I've made. Now, I might just have a close look. There's one, one thing I've actually forgot to tick here, which is a nice little lesson. Um, so I'll, first of all, I'll show you what I've done. All right, so again, if I hide all of these other modifiers, we have the same vase to start with. And you can see what I've been doing here is I've really just been playing around with different combinations of modifiers. And some of them I, I leave turned off. And I just, you know, turn some of them on in different combinations or slide them in different orders. You can reorder your modifiers like this by clicking on the little um, tabs on the right hand side and it will change the shape. So what I think I had before, if I just hit undo there, I had the a wireframe modifier first, which was this one. And what the wireframe did is it turned all of my geometry, if I just collapse this, it gives it holes, which look kind of interesting. Now, one thing I forgot to do is to fill this rim here. So if I open up the wireframe and I click in, I should believe it's boundary. Yes, we get that filled rim here. So that's what we'd need to 3D print. We can't 3D print an object that has this sort of um, open topology. Okay, so the wireframe looks kind of cool. Um, and what I then added, if I turn this one off, I added a subdivision. And you can see without the subdivision, we have this very harsh wireframe. And the subdivision coming after the wireframe smooths it off. Um, some other things I experimented with, which look kind of interesting, is decimate. And decimate is a way of removing some of the detail um, I'll hide these two first and just um, re uh, reveal the decimate. So you can see the decimate, if I change this ratio at the moment, it's about 0.05. If I make it higher, it's bringing back the detail of our object. But if I make it lower, it's making less detail. Now, one of the interesting effects there is that if we, I'll put this back to 0.05, if we turn back on the wireframe, you'll see that we start to get, you know, Slight, a little bit more randomization in where these holes are going to occur and then if I subdivide it it will also do some interesting things like trying to round off some of these edges. Now depending on the size of our, um, our object these holes might start to get too big. So I'm really just showing you ways that we can sort of um, start to play around with this but again it's going to come back to what's going to work for the printer. But I think it's kind of nice to start thinking about these um, procedural techniques as things we can play around with. Um, if I turn off this decimate and go back to this one, you'll see there's also other ways we can um, sort of remove the detail on a shape. So if I turn this one on, you'll see it's got a totally different sort of algorithm being used to remove detail. In the previous one, I was using the collapse. And in this one, I'm using planar and here we have an angle limit so I can change that angle limit and go back to more detail or make it higher and we start to get you know see some quite quite weird and wonderful shapes here of course this won't work um, for ceramic 3d printing but it might be the basis of an idea that you could start to apply somewhere else in your project okay so that's the um, decimate and yeah, and basically what I was doing was just experimenting with the order of operations with these modifiers. Now, one thing I will um, remind you is that if you add something like a subdivision node, just be very careful about how high these numbers get because it's adding more geometry, which will make it harder for your computer to sort of calculate the new shape. And if you make this number too high, you can easily crash your blender. So this might be a good reminder to save your file as you're going. Okay, but if I turn this subdivision on, let's see what happens. So it's 
subdivided the decimation function um, before the wireframe. So if I turn off this one, we can see that if I turn this subdivision on and off, it's adding more detail, but not back to where it started in this sort of slightly more random kind of odd looking, odd looking process. Um, yeah, so I might just, I don't know, turn that down and turn this subdivision back on. And you should see that you can start to get some really interesting patterns. Now again, if we return to, to this thing here, you know, the size of these holes and um, the overhang angle might start to become critical factors. But, you know, I think it's still kind of a cool place to start, especially we might start, you know, turning some of our resolution down and, you know, we can start to see how having all of these nodes simultaneously means that we can start to get some pretty interesting shapes um, without really um, having to make a decision. We can kind of play around with all of these different operations um, back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so this final one I've taken in a more geometric direction um, and I did some stuff that's pretty simple. So I'll, I'll remake this again. If I take this vase and I press Shift D to duplicate, left click and then G and X. What I did here, you can probably guess, is I turned the, um, the rotation resolution. If it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, I should be able to turn this to six. And then I think I'll probably alter the, um, what did I do here? Oh yes, I turned the um, profile modifier here all the way down to zero. Um, so that's just using one of our clamped values, which was a straight line. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the geometry nodes modifier because I want to just do some manual or kind of semi-manual operations on the geometry itself to make this um, sort of slatted texture. So I will apply the modifier here, but I'm going to keep my solidify modifier and I might even just turn it off so we can sort of see that we've just got a basic um, uh, six-sided uh, hexagonal prism. So if I go into uh, edit mode now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the faces and I thought I'd just show you some other tools. I'm going to unselect the base and then I'm just going to sort of unselect and reselect one face so that we have what's called an active face. Um, and the reason for that is I'm going to go now to select and I'm going to use uh, checker deselect. And you'll see what that does is it gives us this checkerboard pattern. And we can sort of play around with these numbers a little bit to start to get different um, numbers of empty deselected faces between the selected ones. Um, and we can uh, change the number of faces that are selected. And once we've got something that we think looks interesting, uh, we can then, all I did was really just extrude these faces. So with these here, I'll go to my extrude tool but I'm going to go to Extrude Individual, this um, fourth option here. And I'm just gonna grab the handle and pull it out. And then keeping this option open, I'm gonna have a little bit of a closer look. And here again, we're really guessing at how much overhang we could get away with with the 3D printer. Because if I look from the front, you can see that we have an overhang here of exactly 90 degrees, which might not be a good thing. Um, but if it's a small extrude, you never know, we might get away with it. So if I put this number to something like 0 0.002, you know, that, that pattern could become something, could become something interesting. And if I turn my solidifier modifier on again, things have gone completely crazy. So what have I done wrong? I'll turn off even thickness and go in closer. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Okay. I might just see if I've got any... Okay, so I might just have to have a little play around with this to see if I've done, if there's anything else drastically wrong in the geometry. As will all of you, as we make these shapes, um, what we will take into the 3D printer might have to be cleaned up a bit. So that brings me to the final step. Let's say that we've decided on 3D printing an object like this. Um, the final step, before we actually start playing around with the printer, is to export this object. Um, now, I think we discussed in class, the file that we export for 3D printing is what's called an STL file, stereolithography. So I click File Export STL, 
And then importantly, I have to make sure I tick this button selection only. If we don't tick this, it will export everything in the scene, which we don't want. And then I'm just going to go up here and you can see I've made a new folder called STL files. So I'll open that up and I've made one vase already. So I'll just press the plus here to make it say PN vase number two. And then I will, I've got apply modifiers ticked because I forgot to apply my solidifier modifier. You should probably apply your modifiers before doing your export. Here I clearly just forgot. So I'll press export STL. And then in another video, I'll show you how to bring that into our 3D printer slicer software that is specific usually to the type of 3D printer we're using and how to perform some checks to see if it's ready to print. But okay, for, for now, I think this is enough for you to start experimenting. So if you've already completed the first video and you've got this geometry nodes set up here, then you can come across here, play around, make some interesting shapes, and then we will talk about them together and see which ones might be suitable for ceramic 3D printing. Okay, that's it for now. Bye bye.